I am Marilyn Mailing Chit. Oh, how I love the resoluteness of that first person singular, followed by that stalwart indicative of B, without that uncertain ing of becoming. Of course, the name had been changed somewhere between Angel Island and the sea, when my father, the paper son, in the late 1950s, obsessed with a bombshell blonde, transliterated Mei Ling to Marilyn. And nobody did question his initial impulse, for we all know lustral men to greatness. Not goodness, not decency. And there I was, a wayward pink baby, named after some tragic white woman, swollen with gin and nembutal. My mother couldn't pronounce the R. She dubbed me number one female offshoot for brevity. Henceforth, she will live and die in sublime ignorance, flanked by loving children, the kitchen deity, by my father Dithers, a Tom cat in Hong Kong trash, a gambler, a petty thug, who bought a chain of chop suey joints in Piss River, Oregon, with bootleg Gucci cash. Nobody dared question his integrity, given his nice, devout daughters and his bright, industrious sons, as if filial piety were the standard by which all earthly men were measured. Oh, how trustworthy our daughters, how thrifty our sons, how we managed to for the experts in education, statistics, and demography were not very creative, but not adverse to rope learning, rope learning, rope learning. Indeed, they can use us. But the model minority is a tease. We know you are watching now, and we refuse to give you any. Oh, bamboo shoots, bamboo shoots. The further west we go, we'll hit east. The deeper down we dig, we'll find China. History has turned its stomach on a black, polluted beach where life doesn't hinge on that red, red wheelbarrow. But whether or not a new lover in that final episode of Santa Barbara will lean over a center candle and call us a bitch. Oh Lord, where have we gone where we have no inner resources? Then one red on spring morning, the great patriarch Chin peered down from his kiosk in heaven and saw that his descendants were ugly. One had a squarish head and nose without a bridge, Another's profile long and knobbed as a gourd. A third, the sad, brutish one, may never, never marry. And I, his least favorite, not quite boiled, not quite cooked, a plump pomfret simmering in my juices. Too listless to fight for my people's destiny. To kill without resistance is not slaughter, says the proverb. So I wait for imminent death. The fact that this death is also metaphorical is testament to my lethargy. So here's a here lies Marilyn Mailing Chin, married once to, and twice to so and so, a Lee and a Wong, granddaughter of Jack the Patriarch of the Hootie, Su Lin Fong, daughter of the virtuous Yuquin Wong and Gigi Chin the infamous, sister of a dozen, cousin of a million, survived by everybody, but forgotten by all. She was neither black nor white neither cherished nor vanquished. Just another squatter in own bamboo grove, minding her poetry. When one day heaven was unmerciful and a chasm opened where she stood, like the jaws of a mighty white whale or the maw of a metaphysical Godzilla, it swallowed her whole. <coughs> she not flinch nor writhe nor fret about the afterlife, but stayed solid as wood, happily, a little gnawed, tattered, mesmerized by all that was lavished upon her and all that was taken away. Mm. <laughs>